Good afternoon. Well, thank you very much, my brother Ivan Wallenyolo, reporting live from Entebbe. Let's move on. Today is World Rabies Day, a day set aside to create awareness about rabies and encourage vaccination. To speak to us about this and more, we do have Dr. Wilfredo Peter, a regulatory officer at the National Drug Authority. Welcome to NTV at One. Thank you, Romeo. Good afternoon. Yes, uh, we did have this conversation on Saturday like a pre-event to Monday's World Rabies Day. But then, let's reiterate, why is this day so important? Uh, rabies is a very deadly disease. It kills every year mm -hmm. globally about 59 million people. The death rate is quite higher in Africa and Asia compared mm -hmm. to other countries, mm -hmm. yet little attention is paid to it. Mm -hmm. And this is a viral disease that can be preventable. So why do we celebrate Wild Rabies Day? We are doing this in, uh, in creating awareness mm -hmm. about the day so that we can advocate for its prevention. Mm -hmm. So ideally, rabies is caused by a virus. And as we all know, viral diseases you can't treat but you can only uh, manage you can prevent through vaccination mm -hmm. and as we crown this world rabies day mm -hmm. much as the disease can kill a hundred percent when the clinical signs start showing mm -hmm. but we can prevent it through vaccination mm -hmm. so the reason why we are advocating for vaccination of dogs especially mm -hmm. which is the main animal which transmit the disease mm -hmm. it's because if we vaccinate about 70% of the dogs in our population, we can control the disease. Because mm. dogs are the main uh, animals that normally transmit the disease, much as we have all other ma mammals, that is warm-blooded animals, including mm. human, bats, and dogs, cats, uh, mm. even cattle, even, mm. even goats. They do uh, get rabies, Indeed. and they can also transmit. Right. But dogs, because of their nature of fighting while biting, because this saliva of the dog or any animal that has rabies, the saliva contains mm -hmm. the rabies virus. So once it bites, definitely the, 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 the other animal will contract. I see. Dr. Peter, where does Uganda stand uh, when it comes to uh, rabies vaccination and so forth? Uh, last time the commissioner mentioned something about close to 50%. Mm. So we are not yet at the level where we need we, the 75. We need the 75%. Ideally, at mm. the moment, we haven't yet reached that level. And we are estimating that by 2030, mm. we should be in position to bring out the disease. To what would you say to someone who has just been bitten by a dog, finally? Once you're bitten by a dog, one thing you need to do is you have to wash the wound with the plenty of water and soap. Why do you have to wash? You're washing because the rabies virus, which is found in the saliva, will have entered the wound. But you have to remove as much as possible that virus mm. from the wound. Mm -hmm. Now, as you remove the virus, you don't stop there because some of them will have already entered your body. That will be multiplying through the nerves. Mm -hmm. So w the next thing you have to go is d go next to your veterinary officer at the district level. Veterinarians will have the ability to verify whether this dog which has bitten you could potentially be having the rabies virus or not. If they feel it is required for you to go ahead and get post-exposure, they'll mm -hmm. write for you a letter. You'll go to the nearest health center that mm -hmm. will offer you the services that is required mm -hmm. at the hospital. Dr. Wilfredo Pira is a regulatory officer at the National Drug Authority. Many thanks for having made the time to speak to NTV. Thank you. And uh, you're still watching NTV at 1. Let's take a very short break. We'll be right back with more information.